So hi, I'm Ray Scalacci with the movieguys.net and the Santa Clarita International Film Festival. And today I have on John Kassler and Joseph Carter. And if I can, can I call you Joe? You're welcome to call me Joe. Okay, okay, Joe. They have they are with the film Fang and Joe. And I gotta tell you, this is so enjoyable. It's a wonderful documentary about his man and his mink, or I should say minks. So let's start off with John. I'm very curious. Uh, how did you go about suddenly coming upon this story? I was uh, like a lot of us. I was on YouTube looking for kind of cool animal vid videos one day, and I was, um, remember mink were kind of cool critters. Like someone had told me at one point, oh, they're really intelligent. You know, they're really good hunters, and that was about all I knew about them. So I was like, oh, I'll do a little YouTubing, and I came across Joe's. Uh, videos and I was like dude these these hunts are super super cool like this is really <laughs> great dramatic material this is really cool to watch but this guy's the world's worst cinematographer because um, <laughs> I just finished film school so <clears throat> I was like and I, I knew what I needed to do right away I was like oh dude we got to get the a7s2 at 120 frames a second on a gimbal that that's what we need to do so I dm Joe and I gave him my proposal and Joe was like cool let's do it Great, great. Joe, how long have you been uh, taping? Your, how long were you taping yourself as far as with the minks doing the YouTubes? Um, my first videos were in 2008. Okay. And did what? they go straight to YouTube or? Yeah, yeah. I started putting them on YouTube in 2008. And okay. that's when I started filming too. I had no reason to film before. Pretty much I, <clears throat> what was happening was um, I was doing something that was unique as far as I knew. I didn't know, I, I couldn't find any information in regards to anybody use, using mink for hunting purposes. Um, whether it was done or not, I don't know, but I sure couldn't find any information on it. And so I wanted to basically um, document what I was experiencing and learning. And so, and share it with, with a few like online friends that were, you know, they also were into mink, but they didn't, they didn't hunt with them. They just had them as just pets, you know? So I, which is rare enough as it is because mink are highly, highly aggressive. So what actually got me into mink to begin with was um, when I first ran into mink was when I moved near a, a fur farm that had them. And yeah. I'm like, well, what are like I knew they're a member of the weasel family, but that was about it. So I asked what a mink was, and the only response I get is, "Oh, they're the most vicious, horrible, uh, wild animals. You can't tame them. You can't train them. They'll kill your dog. They'll kill your cat. They'll kill your pigs. Like all kinds of crazy stuff." I'm like, "They're tiny. How are they killing all this stuff?" And <laughs> so when they told me they're impossible to tame, that made me want to try it. So uh -huh. I started trying it, which it wasn't that hard for me as I, I was a falconer. So I'd trained wild animals before I worked with my grandfather, who was a horse trainer and horses, despite being domestic, they're very much a wild animal. Still um, a lot of instinct, very little brains, no offense to horse people, but that's the fact they're not very smart at all. A lot of instinct, not very much brains. So they, um, you know, it training a horse is a lot like training a wild animal. It's, there's not much different. So anyway, so I, um, I got into these mink just out of curiosity. And then um, when I, you know, a few years into it, I decided I wanted to start trying to use them for something useful. And since I was a falconer, hunting with a wild carnivore was already kind of na natural. So I was like, well, let's see if I can hunt and fish with one. And that's when I started filming it. <clears throat> the first few years when I just kind of had them as a curiosity, you know, an interesting pet, I didn't fit film or even take pictures or anything but when I started hunting with them I was like you know I better document this because as far as I know it's the first time it's ever been done I mean I really there's no way it's the first time somebody's had to have done it but nobody's documented what they did if they if they did anything uh -huh. so I was like I need to document whether or not I'm the first guy I'm definitely the first to document it out in public so that's how I documented it was with videos I also wrote my own notes but that got tedious and Nobody really knew what I was writing, so I so I started. <laughs> so, John, how difficult was it? Because 
you got a lot of snow there. How difficult was it to do that shoot? Oh, it wasn't that that bad actually. I, I, the, the first night was the coldest night by far. It was super. Uh -huh. I think it got down to like negative ten or something with a little bit. Oh, of wow. Yeah, but it, I, mentally I was prepared because I'd lived in Salt Lake before, so I uh -huh. knew, you know. And then when you're filming, you know, if you've been on a lot of sets, the you kind of get director or DP energy where you don't care about the setbacks. You're just gonna you're in zone. Doesn't yes. matter how cold or how hot it is, how tired the other people are, you've got this adrenaline rush in filming. And especially after, so the best, the first day was the best day, like that, the first hunt where uh, Fang almost catches the muskrat and then lets it go. That happened the first day. And so I was just jazzed after that. I was like, wow, that was incredible. Like, <laughs> just, what, what, whatever's hit, that was the first thing. Whatever happens next is going to be amazing. Uh, <laughs> and then we sat by that. So what happened next between what, what I show in the film and Joe getting into the car, I think there's like one shot of, of us at, at like midnight and it's like negative 13. We're oh putting God. stuff back in the car. It was that Fang went down this hole, killed the muskrat in the hole. And we sat there for like two hours waiting for her to retrieve it. Uh -huh. So we we're just lo looking at this hole and holding the camera and the camera's freezing. And the gimbal batteries died. Um, when we were oh my God. Too. Yeah. That's how cold it was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that was the hardest day was definitely the first day. And then after that, you know, cause that was January. And so filming kept going. So it got progressively warmer after that. Yeah. Now I wanted to ask Joe, about um God, what was it i i was very curious because i how do you keep the mink from once it kills it not eating it it just it actually retrieves it and brings it back to you like a hunting dog it's supposed to but they're wild animals so i mean that's the best case scenario um so yeah i mean it's it takes a lot of time and effort to train a mink to do anything really they're they're very stubborn they have a lot of instinct they are intelligent but they use it against you more often than they use it <laughs> so yeah it's very difficult but yeah i just teach them essentially that if they bring it to me they get an easier meal i give them a ground up muskrat from you know a previous hunt okay and they can have a nice easy i mean it's it's hard for us to comprehend because all, all of our meals are pre-prepared and like chew and swallow so like if you think of it it's kind of like if you had a bucket of wheat and you got this whole bucket of wheat and someone said hey i'll give you a roll you're like well i've got a whole bucket of wheat okay go make some bread with it a good right. point roll, right yeah. you go grind the wheat and knead the dough and cook the bread and if that was a little bit of an extreme example obviously it's not quite that cumbersome to the mink but they have to chew th through the hide and then chew up the bones. And it's, I mean, it's, it takes some effort for them to consume a larger animal. Okay. The problem comes in where they have like a little minnow in their mouth. It's like, it's not much harder to chew and swallow <laughs> than it is like yeah. that piece you're about to hand me. So it's a lot trickier, but um, you know, you basically through habit, you teach them the habit of, hey, when you catch something, bring it to me. When you catch something, bring it to me. And obviously you start with things they don't, uh, that are really difficult to eat. And then you slowly work your way up till you've basically conditioned them to do it even when it doesn't make sense. Like a fish, for example, it makes no sense. There's, you just chew and swallow and you've eaten the fish. Right, right. It's, it's slightly easier to eat the ground up muskrat, but not much. Uh -huh. So yeah, you just condition them to it until, you know, you've, it becomes such a strong habit that they do it you know, most of the time, but there's always anything could throw them off and it doesn't go as planned. So I, I have to, I was talking to John earlier and I have to commend you both because this documentary is so grounded and warm. Uh, sometimes you go into a documentary, it's very cold, it's factual and such. And yes, you give us facts, but you also tell it in such a, I don't know, a homey way. It's, it's really nice. And we can see the warmth generating out of you, Joe, which is really something. Um, my heart was broken over Fang. So, and I could say that because we're, you know, we're doing this after, uh, after the viewing of your film. But 
I was, uh, and uh, I was almost as devastated as you were. <laughs> so, uh, but the idea that you raised these other minks just was mind blowing. I absolutely love the film. So, uh, um, John, Joe, is there anything you, you'd like to add or also maybe plug? Maybe you have a website or a Instagram or something. John, why don't you start off? I'll actually let uh, Joe go first with the plug because, you know, Joe's now, uh, I wasn't surprised when Joe's, you know, your whole YouTube series blew up uh, after or during one, during the editing process because I knew Joe had like had the good, the good process or he had, he had the right material. I just had to improve his process a little bit. Like I helped him pick out the right camera for him and, uh, you know, and, and then his production qualities got better. So and I'm working on, I'd like to do another full uh, feature documentary and we're, we're going to try and turn this project into a feature length documentary because we have the, the enough material to do a feature so we're okay. just looking for you know like a proper production partner to kind of help with the editing process and right then, yeah and i'm working on a on features and shorts as a director myself okay and joe so i um i guess the the two things i could plug is i do have a book out and it's mostly a, uh, it, it starts out, the first chapters are story. So it's talk, telling about my story and how, how I went through the process. Um, that's very interesting from just a casual reader's standpoint. Um, and then the rest of the book is a, is a detailed, extremely detailed how-to. So it's textbook sized, so full sheets of paper, not a little novel size, and it's, 242 pages Oh, okay. and it's mostly words. Like there are pictures in there, but it's mostly words. So you get an idea of what kind of like detail would have had to go into that amount. And where can we, where can we find that? The book, oh, he froze. So um, you can find it on Amazon, but I also sell it directly. If you just go to any of my videos and click on the link below, it'll take you right to uh, the, the easiest way to, to purchase my book, but it is available on the Amazon as well. Okay. And how do we find your YouTube videos? Easiest way. Easiest way is just look up Mink Man. Mink Man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My, I, I have a, a monopoly on that mink in general. So really, if you just look mink, there is some funny YouTuber whose his name is mink. Like, I don't think that's his actual name, but he, he, his like screen name is Mink or whatever. That's yeah. kind of, he pops up, but about anything to do with the actual animal is going to lead you back to me pretty darn quick. Okay, great. Well, listen, thank you very much the both of you. That's Fang and Joe to be seen at the uh, Santa Clarita International Film Festival. I believe we're going to try and get it virtually as well. I wish you all the best of luck. Take care and have happy holidays. Thank you. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.